Hey there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now it was Pi Day a few days ago, that was March 14th, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation released a new Raspberry Pi board, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. So if you want to know what's new in the Model B Plus, please let me explain. Okay, so I'm gonna do this video in kind of two parts. The first part, I'm gonna talk a bit about the Raspberry Pi in general. What is it? Why you definitely need to buy one. And the second part will be what's specifically new about this new revision of the board. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi is basically a series of small single board computers. So that's kind of the credit size uh, computer that's got everything that you need on it, including a HDMI port and ethernet ports and USB ports, and you've got space for a memory card and there's modules for connecting a camera to it. And then very importantly, there are some GPIO, general purpose input output pins that allow you to connect to it LEDs and stepper motors and all kind of controllers and you can do robotics with it. So really it's a great board for kind of that, that mix of software and hardware that you can all do on one little board. Now at the heart of the Raspberry Pi uh, Model 3 is a 64-bit quad-core Cortex-A53 processor from Broadcom. So of course the Cortex-A53 is a design from ARM. So it runs a, a version of Linux that's been compiled specifically for the ARM chips. And that makes it much more closer to what we have in our mobile phones than maybe what we might have uh, on the desktop. Now there are several different operating systems you can run on a Raspberry Pi. Most of them are based on Linux and we'll get to that in a moment. But you can also run uh, RiscOS, RiscOS, which was a version of an operating system that was originally in the Archimedes PC way back when, which also had an ARM processor in it. And of course you can get Windows IoT Core, which is a stripped down version of Windows, specifically for running Internet of Things projects. You don't get a desktop, it's not like a desktop situation, it's just this stripped down version so you can upload sort of IoT projects to it. But Linux is the main operating system that we find on uh, the Raspberry Pi, and normally that's either Raspbian, which is kind of a based on Debian, it's a, a version specifically built for the Raspberry Pi, or specialist versions, kind of like OpenELEC, or other media players that you can sort of build onto your Raspberry Pi to turn it into a media player that you can plug into your television, connect hard drives to it, uh, and stream movies over the network, and so on. Now, if you're running Raspbian, basically you, what you get out of the box is a desktop and then basically full uh, developer uh, tools and, of course, connectivity. You've got access to the internet over the ethernet port. You've also got Wi-Fi access. You get a web browser. You can do document editing. You can do programming in Python and in C. And there are even tools and programs that help children how to learn to program, particularly including Scratch. There's a big emphasis on using it with uh, Wolfram Alpha for kind of educational purposes. So really it's an educational tool that allows you to take this very small board and really quite quickly you can be up and running in Python or in C or in Scratch or you can be doing stuff to do with education on it and it works out of the box. And also from within languages like Python and C, you can control these GPIO pins, which means you're then able to interface with kind of the real world via lights and LEDs and electronics and stepper motors and robotics and whatever else you want to connect to it. So it's a really a good way to kind of get uh, into understanding the basics of electronics and start building up from there. Now the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus is basically a re-spin of the ideas of, that we found in the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, the normal version. You've kind of got the same uh, CPU, but now it's been bumped up from 1.2 gigahertz to 1.4 gigahertz. They've bumped up the kind of Wi-Fi capabilities, and there's been a switch over from a physical uh, 100 megabit per second ethernet over to uh, a gigabit ethernet but it's not actually gigabit ethernet speed, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. And the great thing about the Raspberry Pi, of course, is its cost. This board on its own costs $35. I got it for in the UK for £35, and by the time it was shipped to me, it was about £40 in total, and that gives you a full working, brand new, out-of-the-box computer. As I've mentioned already, there's an increase of 200 megahertz in the clock speed, and that's a 15% increase. Now, I did some benchmarking on this 
using OpenSSL, which has some kind of built-in benchmarking for doing uh, cryptography, for generating hashes, and I saw a direct 15% increase in the performance compared to the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, the normal one. So the clock speed is basically directly proportional to the new uh, speed. And there's also been changes for the Wi-Fi chips that come on the board. There's been new antennas put in, and basically there is a greater throughput now with wireless. And also they've now put gigabit ethernet onto the board, but it still has to go through the USB 2 subsystem, which means of course USB 2 is much slower than gigabit ethernet, so you're not gonna see the same kind of levels. However, I did some testing, copying some files around on my network from a Raspberry Pi over to a Linux server, and I was copying a 1.6 gigabyte file, and it took two minutes and 22 seconds, which is about 11 megabits a second using the old Raspberry Pi 3, but that dropped down to just 96 seconds, one minute and 36 seconds, which gives a speed of 16 megabits a second when I was using the new Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. So about a 45% increase in uh, networking performance using Ethernet, which is a, a welcome uh, improvement, particularly for those people that use their Raspberry Pis over a network. A couple other things worth mentioning, there's still one gig of RAM, and that's because the chip that's from Broadcom is limited to one gigabyte of RAM, and so things are gonna stay that way until probably another later revision. May we cross our fingers and hope that we get maybe two gigs in the Raspberry Pi 4 who knows whenever that's going to see the light of day and also in this new model we have bluetooth 4.2 and bluetooth uh, low energy just want to talk a bit about desktop performance desktop performance has always been limited on the raspberry pi 3 uh, because it is only got one gigabyte of ram it is only running at these uh, 1.4 gigahertz it does work you can start up a web browser you can do some browsing of the web it's much better when you're doing just things like uh, sort of code editing, compiling C programs, running things like Scratch, running things like Python scripts. It's absolutely perfect for that. But you certainly probably couldn't use it as a full desktop replacement, although in a pinch you could use it for kind of temporarily if you needed to do something. Now the, the Model B Plus does increase the performance. You do get that 15% increase, uh, but it's still a long cry a long distance away from what you would get with a, with a, even with a cheap laptop, a cheap second-hand laptop. But that's not its purpose. It's not meant to be a desktop replacement. It's meant to be this maker board, this tinker board that allows you to do all kinds of interesting things, uh, you know, as an adult or as a child and learn about uh, software and learn about hardware and kind of build interesting projects with a very low entry cost. I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon so that you get a message every time I drop a new video here on the channel. Please share the video with your friends on social media because we're really trying to build up the community here to get this thing going. Please tell me what you think of this video in the comments. Please tell me what other videos you want to see in the comments. I'm gonna read all the comments and also I'm gonna see you in my next video.